Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the September 13th, 2016 town meeting of the Town Board of Austin. Please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, with liberty and justice for all. So tonight we have a relatively concise agenda, but before we get to it, I would like to share some announcements. Dana, Anna, we just need to do a roll call. Oh, sorry. sorry about that. Uh, Councilwoman Jeffrey? Present. Councilwoman Feldman? Present. Councilman Wiltshire? Present. And Supervisor Levenberg? Here I am. All right. Um, we had a beautiful weekend in Austin, starting with the Austin Matters 5K 2-meter run walk on Saturday morning. It's always such a pleasure, or actually two mile, um, it's always such a pleasure to see everyone come together and to enjoy getting some exercise for a wonderful cause, uh, the Austin Schools. Later that evening, uh, we also joined to celebrate the 125th anniversary of Monitor Hose Company. We're so grateful for all of the volunteer service that all of the members have provided over the many, many years that company has been in Austin. On Sunday, I was joined by elected officials from the federal, state, county, and village governments at the 9-11 Remembrance Memorial at Angle Park, where the village and town, uh, the villages of Briarcliff and Austin and the town of Austin all got together um, to talk about the tragic day 15 years ago when our community came together like never before. It was particularly moving for me to hear words from FDNY Lieutenant Dave Morkel and share the moments on stage with uh, retired Austin officer Donnie Farrell, who organized the gathering, Nancy Scorcia, who sang our national anthem, and Amazing Grace, and also our county legislator Catherine Borgia and town council women Karen DeTori and Liz Feldman, because uh, those, all of those people and I all happened to have children at Park School on that day in 2001. So in addition to all of our community residents who were there, we Park School parents had another particular nexus on that day 15 years ago, and, and many of us shared memories. Yet Dave Morkel had a very intense involvement at Ground Zero, which I had never heard about until he was able to join us for the first time on September 11th in Ossining at our local remembrance. So that was um, very special and very, very moving. I know we're all so grateful to Dave, as well as the FDNY and our Ossining uh, Fire Department, as well as all of our local first responders, who were there for all of us on that tragic day and put their lives on the line and their families on hold as they are here for all of us every single day. So we are very, very grateful for them. Additionally, our entire community came together to pitch in wherever and however we could each do, individually and collectively, and we have done so ever since. And one great example of that is here tonight. And our next generation, um, which I'll talk about in a second. On Sunday, many of us attended the unveiling at Gerlach Park of a new place for us to remember. Local Eagle Scout Chris Kreika completed his Eagle Scout project by installing a sitting area in honor of his friend's parent, Gary Haig, Austin resident who lost his life at the World Trade Center on 9-11. Chris's project produced something that everyone can enjoy, including a stone with a bronze plaque identifying Gary, and also Arthur G. Jones from Austin and Ariel Jacobs and Krishna Murthy from Briarcliff, as well as planting a red oak tree and uh, building a small red birdhouse, as well as a picnic table that he made from scratch with the help of other troop members and volunteers, which has an American flag painted on top. This is truly a special spot where we can go to remember those we lost. Chris and his mother Mary Langan are here tonight and I'd like to ask them to come up now to be recognized. Oh, to do this, I've never done a recognition before. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Dana? His father's here, too. I'm, oh, your father's here too. Okay, so come on up, Mr. Kreika, and um, if I don't know if anybody, a town board members, want to join me after, we'll just say in recognition of your efforts to focus your Eagle Scout project on Austinian's Girlac Park by creating a beautiful sitting area 
in honor of your family friend, <coughs> Gary Haig, and the other Austin and Briarcliff residents who were tragically lost on September 11, 2001, we wish to thank Chris and recognize his enthusiasm for Eagle Scout values, as well as his generosity of spirit and maturity that led him to implement such a touching and important project. Congratulations, Chris, and of course your family. You couldn't have done it without them, which you spoke a lot about on that day, so uh, congratulations. And thank you very much thank for all you. that you've done for the interaction, and thank you, Mom and Dad. Uh, you guys are really great representations of our community and all that Boy Scouts has offered to our community. So, yeah, here, here, I'll show you how. Go like this, like, like this. that, and there you go. Okay. Oh, whoops, oh. got it. Oh, more. I don't know if you want to say very short and brief anything. If, very short. I know it's hard for you to do short, but if you want to say quick something. <laughs> yes? Um, thank you, Ms. Levenberg, and thank you, Ms. Feldman, for attending um, my little opening. And I'm sorry that the rest of you could not make it, um, but I spoke a lot. And one of the big things that I touched on was that uh, my mom and my dad were two of the biggest uh, influences throughout this project, and I wanted to thank them again. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Dad. Thank you. Thank you again. Congratulations again. And thank you again for everything that you did. Thanks to your entire troop for also inspiring you and, and teaming up with you to do this great project and, and making sure that you uh, stay on your way and hopefully we'll be at your Eagle Scout ceremony sometime in the future. Uh, so uh, I want, uh, again, I also had an opportunity um, to go to New York State's Mid-Hudson Region Economic Development Council yes meeting yesterday where the region announced their recommendations that they're sending to the state for priority project funding. I was very, very pleased to hear they are recommending the Sing Sing Museum project to go on for further consideration. This means that there's a very good chance the project will get additional funding for the next phase. Some of us also had the chance to hear from the museum consulting company, Lord Cultural Resources, which is a world-renowned uh, museum consulting firm that had been commissioned to work on this project, and they presented their museum program plan last week as part of phase one of this project, which was also funded um, with state funds, and uh, there's preservation work that will continue to be funded coming up through our local, um, st our state senator and assembly members um, have secured state funding for that project, as well as additional funding through the Regional Economic Development Council. The reason is because the council believes that this fits in well with the region's goals uh, to further economic development here in this region, uh, specifically that the museum is going to drive tourism, economic development, and downtown revitalization for the village and town of Austin, as well as Hudson Valley in general. It's very exciting to see this project moving forward with strong regional, local, and state support. Also at the meeting, I had the opportunity to connect with the regional director of the State Parks Department to discuss the proposal for the bike lanes that would connect our public spaces and bike trails to one another, as well as with our commercial and open space corridors. And I was um, excited to hear that Cena Cutson had been working, has been working with the village of Sleepy Hollow as well as Tarrytown on connecting um, their by creating a bike trail and path and connecting up with Riverwalk. So we're hopeful that there will be some continuity there and that Scenic Hudson um, might be interested in helping us out in the future with that project as well. The State uh, Parks Department also offered to help us out with trails, so that's also exciting. Um, we have multiple events coming up this weekend, many of which are part of the Hudson Valley Ramble, which is another state initiative uh, to really focus in on the, our different regions and make sure that uh, we get attention to our historic places and spaces as well as our outdoor spots. There are several events to cho choose from at 10 a.m. on Saturday morning. You can enjoy a free sail on the Hudson with ferry sloops out of Shattamuck Yacht Club, take a hike through history at T-Town, or join a guided tour of the Weir Chamber 
starting from the community center um, along the old Croton Aqueduct. Another event near and dear to me is the Legends and Lore presentation that will be taking place at our own Sparta Cemetery, where famed storyteller Jonathan Cruck will be recounting the legend of the Leatherman before the Legends and Lore marker is unveiled, bearing the Leatherman's story. So this is something very special happening at uh, Sparta Cemetery, which is part of the town. Admission is $10 per person or $20 <coughs> per family. All proceeds will benefit the Ossining Historic uh, Cemeteries Conservancy, which is organizing this event. Ramblers can park at Scarborough Presbyterian Church in Briarcliff and take a free shuttle across the street to Sparta. No cars will be allowed at the cemetery. All of these events begin at 10 a.m. this Saturday, September 17th, but Ramble events will be ongoing throughout the month of September. Another local event of note will be, uh, that's also part of the Ramble will be on Saturday, September 24th, where our state senator, David Carlucci, will be leading a hike at T-Town starting at 8 a.m. Don't miss this great opportunity to meet your senator and catch up on all of the great work he's doing in our region. You can get more information on these and other Ramble events at HudsonRiverValleyRamble.com. Also this weekend, the town will be holding two Mind, Body, Spirit Austin events beginning with an all-levels boot camp at Engle Park on Saturday morning at 9.30 a.m. Club fit trainer Tracy Bielenberg and fitness director Susie Reiner will be leading a 60-minute workout based on body weight exercises, and the first 25 participants will win a club fit water bottle and be entered into a raffle to win a club fit membership. Remember, the Mind, Body, Spirit Austin program that was launched in May uh, is an effort on the uh, town's part to highlight all of our outdoor public spaces in our parks, as well as our local businesses um, that, that focus in on mind, body, and spirit. And uh, this is an opportunity for you to learn how you can do exercises or other kind of fitness training or, or mind training and feel, make yourself feel, feel better um, with some guidance or without the guidance. On Sunday at 9.30 a.m., Enrique Rosario of ICU Fit Training will be leading another of his famous Sunday Fun Day 30-minute workouts. But this one is extra special in honor of the start of football season. This Sunday will be a train like the pros workout. No equipment required, but you can wear your favorite team jersey and eye black. Those are recommended. This will also be at Engel Park. This Saturday evening is the Westchester Collaborative Theater's annual fundraiser. The Endless Summer Gala will be held at Shadamuck Yacht Club between 7 p.m. Uh, and 10 on September 17th. So come down and support the arts in Westchester and join me because I will be there. More information or to purchase tickets um, is available at their website, uh, wctheater.org. Another event in the coming weeks will be the annual Senior Fair at the Community Center, hosted by Assemblywoman Sandy Galef and State Senator David Carlucci. Please join us on Thursday, September 29th, between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. to learn about all of the services that are available in this community and in this county and beyond and through the state, and to get connected with resources available to our seniors. I also want to invite everyone to our next town hall meeting, which will take place next Tuesday, September 20th, at the Austin Public Library at 7.30 p.m. We have a variety of topics scheduled, so keep an eye on the town website later this week for our agenda. And now I will invite my colleagues on the board to share any additional announcements. Are there any? Oh. <coughs> okay. Hearing none, uh, any liaison report? This way? Okay. And hearing none for those, I would now like to invite Kathy Asaro, our nutrition site manager, to come up and give us a quick update on our senior program. You know what? I'm sorry. I do have one liaison report. I wanted to congratulate Monitor Hose on their 125th anniversary with the Ossing Fire Department and in Ossing and thank them for their service. Fantastic. That's right. about that. So Kathy and her staff provide so many exceptional programs for our residents. Uh -huh. It's not that often that we get to actually hear about them all, so we get to give you a chance to brag a little bit about all the great work that you and your staff do every day. Kathy, take it away. Um, first of all, we serve lunch to our seniors every single day, a hot lunch that is um, it's catered from Hubbard's Cupboard in Mamaronic. Um 
We do home delivered meals also for our homebound seniors. Um, we do are you okay calls every single day to check on our seniors. We do grocery shopping on Thursdays to shop right, which they don't get to go to. They think it's cheaper there. So we go to shop right. <laughs> Uh, we have various exercise programs going on. Uh, there's one on Tuesday, which is very good through um, Westchester County. Um, um, oh, my God. I lost my train of thought. Through Mainstream. Through Mainstream, um, through the community college, Westchester Community College. There's a chair yoga class. 1030 on Tuesdays. Wednesdays, we have another exercise teacher that comes in and does low-impact aerobics, and that is through the village of Austin Rec Department. Um, on Fridays, we have an, another exercise class, um, which they love. It's um, they fit and strong with exercise bands. And what else do we do? We do a lot of stuff. We have a uh, we have blood pressure testing end of the month every Tuesday. Taxi coupons we sell for seniors that need to get around town for a discount ride. Uh, we play bingo, which is their favorite. <laughs> Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, the Golden Age meeting is on Tuesday. They play bingo in there too. Uh, we have line dancing on Thursday. What else do we do? Um, we have some upcoming events going on. We're going to have flu shots through the Prescription Center of Austin on Thursday, September 22nd at 1130. Um, all they need to bring is their Medicare card or insurance card or a pre prescription drug card. Um, as Dana already mentioned, the senior fair is Thursday, September 29th in the gym for all the seniors who want to catch up on, you know, a bunch of stuff from a bunch of vendors, you know, to help them. Um, we also have on October 3rd a citizen preparedness um, program going on um, through Camp Smith. They're going to volunteer to come and show everybody, anybody who wants to come, how to prepare for a disaster, any kind of disaster. I'm sorry, Kathy, when is that? October 3rd. At what time? 10 o'clock in the morning at the community center. That's it. Yep. I see minutes. in your packet yep. you also Question? have a food bank. We take the seniors to the food bank um, every Every time they're there at the Baptist Church. So it Ray might. Street. Yeah. We oh. probably should announce that Star Bethlehem Church, which is 304 Spring, Spring Street. Street, Austin, right. Actually has the mobile food truck that comes to them. Can, right. How often? When do they, when do they go? The day, um, twice a month usually they come. They're coming again um, the 21st of September, October 5th and 19th. November 9th and 30th, and December 7th and 14th, from 12.30 to 2. And you're supposed to bring a box? Art they have to bring bag. a bag okay. or something to put their stuff in, okay. whatever they're giving out. And we bring them over there. We drop them off, go back. I mean, we're running around bringing seniors home. We also have transportation to and from the center for lunch. And, uh, and I know my father and stepmother really enjoyed the art classes for years and years and before art, they moved right, to Florida. We had art on Thursday. Every Thursday they went religiously, and she actually became quite a wonderful artist because of the instruction she started there Good when she her. first retired. Paul Jeffries. Paul Jeffries is been an there amazing for teacher. Years. He's been there since I've been there, mm -hmm. and I've been there since 1986. So, so yeah, I mean, they were very young been there a long time. Uh, seniors just retired, but they really enjoyed that program every week. Right. You have your line dancing. Awesome. Line you dancing with Cameron And how many Kelly. people would you say you get every day on a regular basis? Between 40 and 50, sometimes right. more. Depends on the day. Depends on what's going on. Depends on the food. Right. 
you know. <laughs> right. So and, they, and you publish a you publish a monthly calendar. Monthly calendar which has the menu right on the calendar. Has the menu. That's how you yep. know that's you know they what call you're it a get. menu but it's a calendar of events. You right. Know, but. <laughs> But the there's lots of great right stuff on there, including all the art classes, the line dancing. Yep, um, everything's on there's there. There's also knitting. You have the knit, a knitting, knitting class on Monday. Right. Right. And then uh, sometimes you do field trips besides, right? Every once, every in, once in a while. Every once in a while. Actually, the Golden Age Club usually does that. Okay. Yeah, every once in a while, we take them to a nursing home for lunch. We get invited for free. But I have to say, I mean, having having visited and um, spent time with the seniors uh, during the day at the program, they, uh, there's a lot of people in this community, and this is open to everyone in Briarcliff and Austin, um, right. who's 60 and over, I believe. 60 is, and over. 60 and over. Um, there are a lot of people who really do take advantage of this, and there's a lot of fantastic friendships, I think, that are formed, or right. relationships. We'll call them relationships. Come on down. Um, <laughs> you know, camaraderie. <laughs> you um, people come there to support each other, and you know it, it's really incredible that our community has such a robust senior program. And Kathy, you guys are doing a great job. I think you also help connect people to additional services if they need. Exactly right. We have a social worker, Debbie Klein, who helps them with everything. Right. So you help with She's awesome getting My reimbursements awesome. for health services or getting them connected to you know if they have any needs that the county services can help them with or state mm -hmm. um, she's a wealth of information and she's able to really um, kind of hone in on what their needs might be and and you know that are you okay program can you just explain a little bit about I mean you kind of just bit, is it very short but you have a list of people that you I have call. a list of people that I call every day and um uh, we call on the weekend also, either 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock to check, make sure they're okay. Um, if I can't find them or if Pat can't find them, we have to call somebody, a contact. If we can't get a contact, we call the police, go check, make sure they're okay. We found a few people on the floor. I mean, just recently, one of my drivers found one of our seniors we hadn't heard from in a few days. Um, I asked them to go check, and she was on the floor in her house. So I didn't reach her phone. Was down by her foot. So um, right, and so I mean, it's also an opportunity when you have when you have relationships with people right. like that that we do through the senior program, um, and know know where to expect them when they usually come in. It's really right. an opportunity for us to make sure even if they aren't signed up for the are you okay program to to make right. sure that you know if we don't know and we know something's not right you know we're like that friend that neighbor um through you know this through the senior program that they may not have who's necessarily touch touching base with them every single day or you know even um people who have family who isn't or who aren't that close you know that that's it's really a great opportunity right. uh so we're you know we're really grateful for this and it's this program has been going on for a long time, and I know that you continue to add, and I'm sure that you get feedback from um, the seniors as to what they like and what they don't like. Oh, yeah, every they day. Don't, they're not hesitant to speak their mind, the people no, in your not. program. <laughs> they, they are no very, filter. very, very interested. So yeah. um, are, there, are there other questions? And I you know, definitely okay. invite all of my uh, board colleagues to, to take a visit. Um, yeah. speak to Kathy and let her know when you're coming. So, uh, she makes sure that, you know, you get into the line dancing. Yeah. Um, come on down. <laughs> well, I have visited a few place. times, but I'm not, I haven't line danced yet. But, um, so for all those out there who might want information about, you know, all these programs that, uh, you and the, uh, Madam Supervisor both mentioned, they should call where? Call 762-1350. So seven six two one three five zero, and that way they can get information yeah. on any of the anything different programs that right. were discussed. Um, so also, um, I I too just want to say it's it's a, an amazing program, and um, there's lots to do, and anybody can be part of some of it, and not all of it, and come some days, and not other days, and like something, and not another thing, and just make friends and it's it's a great 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 thing so also if you should take a minute to talk about who are the people that work there with you um so debbie klein is debbie a social klein worker is our social worker uh lynn muller is my right hand she's sits in the office with me and 
does most of the computer work along with Debbie. Um, my chauffeurs, Lonnie Walker, Ed Banta, Jenny Bermeo, and Pat Ferrazueta. They all chip in, pitch up, pick up people, drop off people, take them shopping, take them to the bank, take them, they're all over the place, you know. They're doing home delivered meals. Uh, they bring home people. And From the Golden Age meeting, they bring people home after the meeting. Not after bingo, because bingo lets out after three, and we're, we only work till three. <laughs> um, yeah, meals. And who are your, and who your kitchen have people? our kitchen staff, Denise Auerdick, uh Angela Muse, Connie Del Borgo. She's part-time, work in the kitchen. And they're awesome, all of them. And we thank them. Very grateful. And... Uh, there was one other thing I just was thinking about when you said, oh, and so, right, and this is all at the community center. Downstairs. On, downstairs, so on the on the first level, since it's, it's downstairs pool. depending on where you enter. Um, it could be just on the first floor. And um, it is um, ADA compliant, um, so you can get a wheelchair <coughs> in there, um, mm-hmm. and you can maneuver around to the Definitely. facilities and er- everything. So, yeah. I just want to say one thing about the... Uh, Food program when they the trucks at the church there's never a shortage of people believe me no there isn't I think everybody knows because <laughs> they they have we have some lines that I I work it I work in there I help packing the food and stuff I do that all the time but, but it's just amazing how many people be there mm-hmm and they start at one o'clock but people are there at 11. I know they're waiting online. I um, know they want their lunch early so but they can a, get over there. It's a good there. program. It's nice though. It gives everybody a chance to at least have one good meal, I guess. Mm-hmm. I mean, if it's anything also, like the uh, program, the the truck food truck program that they do at, for the um, for the school at outside of Park School, there's uh, quite a lot of, of yeah, it's quite yeah. a lot of good food, and you can actually you can get food enough for a week. Sometimes in oh, those yeah. bags, you know, depends on how many people you're feeding, but, but there, you can get uh, quite a lot of food and, and a lot of it, you know, it's mo- for the most part, fresh produced, all kind of interesting things and regular things. Not so much. For those in need. Those in need. Mm-hmm. Any other questions? Anything else that you want to add or share with us about any, any updates or any concerns? No, I think I ate them all. All right. Well, thank you so yeah. much for coming out tonight. And thank you. Probably way past your bedtime since I know you have to get up super early. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kathy is also a, a fitness uh, fanatic. So, uh-huh. besides the fact that all of the programs for her seniors uh, in, involve some sort of fitness, um, she's also making sure that she stays healthy so I she try. can help, uh, help our, try, our seniors yeah. out. Well, so my thank two you. My grandsons keep me occupied, too. Awesome. <laughs> oh, Thanks yeah. so much, they Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. All right, so I think back to our, what are we up to? I think we are now up to our public comment. Yep. Do we have any public comment on any agenda items? Seeing none, we can move into board resolutions. Resolved that the town board of the town of Ossining hereby approves the August 23rd, 2016 minutes of the regular meeting as presented. We have a motion. So moved. Second. Questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Austin hereby approves the voucher detail report dated September 13th, 2016 in the amount of $561,684.68. We have a motion. So moved. Second. Discussion? Maddie, you want to just give an explanation for the public? Sure. Um, there are, there are um, a couple of larger than usual bills on this particular voucher detail report, um, but it also does account for three weeks of bills because we had a fifth Tuesday. Um, so one of um, obviously our larger bills every month is the Village IMA services, $269,000. Uh, we also had our fourth quarter workers' compensation premium um, in this voucher run. It's about $34,000. Um, one 
rather exciting one is the $32,800 for the conversion of our army truck. Um, some of you that were on the board last year might remember we were able to buy through federal surplus um, a large truck for $3,500 um, that is probably worth many, many times that. And we had it converted into a 10 wheeler that our highway department will now be able to use. So I this saw is, that. Yes. I saw it at Cedar Lane Park and I thought the army was there except for there was a town emblem on it. Yep. <laughs> and it was an interesting. It's a big truck. It is a large truck, and they've already uh, gotten some use out of it, and they hope to be able to use it um, whenever they need to do, um, like, big hauls of material. Um, so they're they're very excited to have it, um, and it's certainly a, a huge asset now for the town that we did not pay nearly enough for. So we're very glad to have very, it. Very. Um, and that money was actually encumbered in 2015, so that's not new money. Um, it's something that it just took a very long time uh, for the company to convert it. Um, and then besides that, we made our annual payment to Norwest, uh, which is a fee that we pay on an annual basis as part of our recreation IMA with the village that provides uh, recreation opportunities for differently abled uh, persons in our community. So that's about $28,000 there as well. So a couple big um, unusual bills that, that we don't see too terribly often. Thank you. Without further ado, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Whereas, pursuant to a judgment of foreclosure for unpaid taxes entered by the Supreme Court of the State of New York, Westchester County, the Town of Austin conducted an auction of foreclosed properties at 16 Croton Avenue at 1 p.m. on August 10, 2016, in order to sell off properties with delinquent taxes owed to the Town of Austin, one of which was 27 Secor Road, tax ID 97.7. Dash one dash four one, and whereas all present had the opportunity to register and become qualified bidders to bid on the three or that should be four properties for sale under the condition that the party offering the highest purchase price would be awarded the property, subject to a resolution approving such sale by the town board of the town of Austin. And whereas Mr. Pedro Silva of INP Realty Corp. Austin, New York, was a successful bidder at a bid price of one hundred fifty nine thousand dollars. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town accepts the high bid of one hundred fifty nine thousand dollars for the property at 27 Secor Road, submitted by Mr. Pedro Silva. The town is authorized to accept a deed for the property from the receiver of taxes in a form approved by council to the town, and the town supervisor is authorized to execute a deed as well as all required transfer documents in forms acceptable to council to the town, effectuating the sale of the premises to the high bidder upon receipt by the town of the bid price. Furthermore, upon conveyance of the property to the high bidder, the bidder will pay all real property taxes for the property as adjusted from the date of conveyance with all additional accrued interest and or penalties that may have accrued against the property for unpaid taxes through the day of conveyance being hereby waived. So this is the four, first of four resolutions that are very similar, accepting the high bids on the properties that the town auctioned off on August 10th, 2016. Um, as we discussed at our last work session, we had great results on this auction. I want to again thank our receiver of taxes, Gloria Freed, and her staff for all their hard work to help our taxpayers. Um, and I'm going to also ask that for the next few resolutions, we'll just skip to the parts that are relevant. Um, so all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Attention. Oh, get a motion, sorry. Can I have a motion first and then we'll so move. Vote. <laughs> Second. Okay. And then I believe everybody's in favor since we voted for the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Whereas, pursuant to a judgment of foreclosure for unpaid taxes entered by the Supreme Court of the State of New York, Westchester County, the Town of Austin conducted an auction of foreclosed properties at 16 Croton Avenue at 1 p.m. on August. I'm, <laughs> I'm getting there on August 10, 2016, in order to sell off properties with delinquent taxes owed to the Town of Austin, one of which was a vacant lot on Hunter Street, tax ID number 97.7-2-70. Um, whereas, Mr. Carl Dibble of K. WD Realty Inc. Irvington, New York was a successful bidder at a bid price of $51,000. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town accepts the high bid of $51,000 for the property at Hunter Street submitted by Mr. Carl Dibble. We have a motion. We'll move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. 
Whereas pursuant to a judgment of foreclosure for unpaid taxes entered by the Supreme Court of the state of New York, Westchester County, the town of Austin conducted an auction of foreclosed properties at 16 Croton Avenue at 1 p.m. on August 10th, 2016, in order to sell off properties with delinquent taxes owed to the town of Austin, one of which was 35 Yale Avenue, tax ID number 89.15-2-59. And whereas Miss Juana M. Correa Braun, Austin, New York, was a successful bidder at a bid price of $148,000, now, therefore, be it resolved that the town accepts the high bid of $148,000 for the property at 35 Yale Avenue, submitted by Ms. Juana M. Correa Braun. I have a motion. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extension. Whereas pursuant to a judgment of foreclosure for unpaid taxes entered by the Supreme Court of the state of New York, Westchester County, the town of Austin conducted an auction of foreclosed properties at 16 Croton Avenue at 1 p.m. on August 10th, 2016, in order to sell off properties with delinquent taxes owed to the town of Austin, one of which was 18 Sarah Street, tax ID 89.15-4-50. And whereas Mr. Wilman A. Morocho Austin was a successful bidder at a bid price of $70,000, now therefore be it resolved that the town accepts the high bid of $70,000 for the property at 18 Sarah Street, submitted by Mr. Wilman A. Morocho. We have a motion. So moved. Second. Okay. Any objections to this or any conversation? If not, can I have all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? All right. And then um, just to mention that, did we get through all of them or is there one? Oh, there's one more. We have a no, that's all. Okay, that was it. I just want to mention that we're closing on these properties on September 27th. Okay. Whereas the town of Austin is required to collect town, county, and school taxes for the municipality with the onus on the town to make whole the county and school district for any uncollected taxes. And whereas the receiver of taxes has been approached by a property owner requesting a short-term payment plan for the owner-occupied property at 47 Yale Avenue, tax parcel designation 89.15-2 56 and whereas the town board pursuant to article 5 of the Austin town code as authorized by section 1184 of the new york real property tax law before entry of a final judgment may withdraw a, a parcel for which payment of real property yeah for which payment of real property taxes is delinquent from a foreclosure proceeding and enter into an installment plan for payment of all delinquent taxes, as well as interest and penalties, and does occasionally grant such a plan and has the discretion to accept or reject any proposal by a residential or commercial property owner, providing the owner meets the eligibility requirements set forth in section 180-17 of the town code, and the payment plan conforms to the requirements for such a repayment plan set forth in section 180-18 of the town code. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Austin hereby grants the aforementioned payment plan, which terms comply with the Town Code, to grant this property owner who has been determined to be eligible with the understanding that this sets no precedent going forward for this or any other property in the future. I have a motion. Ooh. Second. Okay, so this is the, um, sometimes a receiver of taxes is contacted by property owners in distress who are having trouble paying their past due taxes and they want to work out a payment plan. The receiver recommended that we entertain this particular request, and we're glad to work with this property owner until they get back on their feet. At all, my board colleagues agree. Is there any uh, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extension? <clears throat> Resolve that the Town Board of the Town of Austin hereby authorizes the supervisor to enter into a contract with Corporate Plans, Inc., doing business as CPIHR, PO Box 293, Syracuse, New York, 13214, and with corporate offices at 6830 Cochrane Road, Solon, Ohio, 44139, subject to approval by Council to the Town for consulting services in connection with Employee Benefits Administration under the Affordable Care Act, effective April 1, 2016 through March 31st, 2017, at a fee not to exceed $8,075. Do you have a motion? So moved. Second. As we discussed um, this at our last work, um, work session last week, um, we're pleased to continue to work with CPI HR to help us stay on top of the Affordable Care Act and all the regulations that we need to be um, in compliance with to uh, meet the federal mandate. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? 
Did I get a motion for that? Yeah. Yes, you did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was, I think, uh, I believe it was yeah. Councilman Northern Feldman and, and, and oh, okay. Culture. Okay, thank you. Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Ossining hereby authorizes the supervisor to sign an agreement with Michael Haberman Associates, Inc. of 125 Front Street, Mineola, New York, to furnish equitable small claim software to the Town of Ossining for the purposes of preparing court-ready appraisals to defend property values in accordance with their proposal dated August 30th, 2016, at an amount not to exceed $12,000 for the initial year and $3,000 for each additional year, and be it further resolved that this contract is subject to approval by council to the town. Do I have a motion? A motion, Ms. Uh, our town assessor, Fernando Gonzalez, brought us a request for the software in last, at last week's work session as well. And we're pleased that he found a product that will assist him and our assessment staff and also be customized to Ossining uh, to prepare court-ready appraisals more quickly and properly defend our property values. Um, this is going to be especially helpful at the end of our initial uh, reassessment process. Any questions? More discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Ossining hereby authorizes the Supervisor to sign an agreement with Aguila Taxi at 25 Yates Avenue in Ossining and Mommy's Taxi at 7 Fuller Road in Ossining, New York, ending December 31st, 2016, with all coupons to be reimbursed at the rate of $4.75 each. A motion. So moved. Second. Uh, usually the, these agreements or ones that we get early in the year for our um, call cab companies, but these contracts just came to us last week from companies who expressed their desire to join the call cab program for 2016. So we will make sure that the owners are aware that the agreement will only be in effect through the end of 2016, and they will then need to reapply for 2017 in the coming months. Uh, so these are in addition to the ones that are already? Correct. Okay, how many taxi services do we have that provide that? I think there are five on the list already, so this is two more. Yeah. So seven altogether that they can call. I, I gotta ask a question. Who who checks out these cabs? Some of these things are so ragged that they shouldn't be on the road. <laughs> it, they're pet, you can hear them a mile away. They, I mean, rattling and shaking. Somebody they don't. Yeah, I, I don't have the answer to this, but I, I we can certainly pose that to our clerk. Um, we need to see because. Uh, as soon as somebody gets killed, then everybody's ready to. Mm. Gracious, I hope we're not approving. I, think I know that, that, they, that our town clerk to... works very closely yes. with. I mean, it used to be yes. Lieutenant Carpenter. I'm not sure if if he, you know, has continued that responsibility now that he's a lieutenant. Right. Um, but we can certainly find out from Marianne. But um, they do need to have they do need to have their their taxi license and be permitted to drive in New York State uh, before, and inspected with the, with the and be inspected car. exactly before they they receive these. And they need to have their ducks in a row to get, um, to be able to part of this program. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Okay, that is the end of our resolutions for this evening. Uh, correspondence to be received and filed. Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Ossining hereby accepts the following to be received and filed. Schneider Resolution of Subdivision Plat Approval from the Town Planning Department, dated September 7, 2016, and Town Planning Board Meeting Minutes, dated July 20, 2016. Motion for that. I need a motion for that. Okay. Motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Uh, resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Austin hereby accepts the following monthly reports for the month of August 2016. Town Supervisor's Office, Town Clerk's Office, and GE Helicopter Report. have a motion? Second. Discussion? Um, I did see that there was, if I remember correctly, on the helicopter report, there was one helicopter that went over at 8 42 p.m and what what they have till nine is that part of the they i've never seen them go outside of their mandated times which is is it nine i believe it's nine i will uh, say this i've heard helicopters going over at late times like 9 48 over my house so that's how i know um and i think i left a message requesting that we try to figure out where it's it's more than 
It's happened about two or three times now. Yeah, the um, GE helicopters have a set flight path, though, right. that I don't think is, is in that neighborhood. So we were going to try to find out if it was perhaps Westchester County Westchester or County, um, right. Medical Center or, or something along those lines. Yeah. yeah. I, just, I know many of us heard fighter planes going overhead mm-hmm. the other day, and that was <laughs> yes. a ceremony, actually. And we were trying to get some information, and we learned that, in fact, our police do not get those reports. Uh, so they aren't. They don't necessarily. I mean, they may get the report later, but they don't know in advance. Yes, they did not know what it was. I learned from Facebook. Over in advance. <laughs> so oftentimes, you know, we do have to turn to our news sources who find that information out faster than anybody else. So in this case, I think that's how most people found out was through news sources. Yeah, I don't um, think the news source is going to tell me what the helicopters are that are flying at a quarter to ten at night. It but, depends. But, oh, it well, depends. I mean, I didn't hear I mean, any if they're, major... If they're on a mission looking for a true. lost person well, when... or something like that, then it might be. There's it's lots also... of different reasons. Um, I, I just want to be careful that, you know, nobody belie- nobody gets the impression because we're talking about the GE helicopter report. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, 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 that's no. flying outside... Uh, I do think that we have heard that, but they're not the only helicopters in town, and not everybody has to come to us and file a report of when they're going over our heads. So just so no, I don't. Know. I don't. Actually... I just want everybody to, to be aware okay. of that. So to be clear, I wasn't saying that it was GE. No, I, know. I was saying that I wanted, uh, in case there are other residents yes. who have heard helicopters over their homes, since I assume it's not just my house that they're flying over. Yes. Um, that we don't think it's GE um, because they are very good about when they fly and it's not after 9 o'clock at night and almost never hit that time. Generally, it's like 5 o'clock in the afternoon and after 8 in the morning. But there have been some and so we are in the process of trying to figure out who it is because it's like two or three times now, which is a lot for our town. Um, And it may be county. It could be... Uh, Westchester Medical, we, we're not sure. So we're looking into it. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, you're just voting for that. You were accepting <laughs> these three the report. reports, the town supervisors, the town clerks, and the GE helicopter report. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Okay, uh, we can move into visitor recognition. Is there anyone here who's come to address the board? Okay, please come to the microphone and give your full name and residential address. And we just ask that everybody limit their remarks to um, within four minutes. And if you have remarks that go beyond that, if you could please submit them in writing to the board. Okay. My name is Brenda Tim. I live at 70 Glendale Road in Ossining. I'm technically a Newcastle resident. I am a member of the Concerned Citizens of Greater T-Town. And I'm here to read into the record a letter that was submitted prior to this meeting by Linda Lowell. Uh, who is a town of Austin resident and who is unable to be here. Dear Supervisor Levenberg and board members, on September 28th, the Newcastle Board of Appeals, CBA, is scheduled to vote on a resolution to approve the Sunshine Children's Home, their application to expand. I urge you, in the days that remain, to press the CBA to issue a positive declaration. Beyond that, if they approve the expansion with a negative declaration, I urge you to bring an Article 78 proceeding on behalf of the town of Austin in pursuit of that positive declaration, or to file an amicus brief supporting any Article 78 actions brought by other concerned residents of the towns of Austin and Newcastle. I make this request because I believe that the question of Sunshine Homes waste and water requirements are of critical importance to the town of Austin. Sunshine has manipulated its projected water requirements not to reflect reality, but in order to render its application palatable to the ZBA. Without a real in-depth independent EIS, the town's sewage disposal system and ousting residents on wells, and I'm on the well as well in Newcastle, that are in the vicinity of Sunshine face unknown but real risks. Sunshine initially asserted that it would need 11,300 gallons per day for 122 patients. After being urged to study the impact on neighbors' wells by the Newcastle Planning Board, also an involved agency for secret purposes, and hearing many objections from Sunshine's neighbors, the ZBA ordered a report from an independent hydrologist. That hydrologist reported that Sunshine's estimated water budget of 11,300 gallons per day would severely tax the bedrock aquifer during drought conditions, allowing for only a 9% surplus of available groundwater based on daily demand of the facility. 
You recommended that water use be projected using New York State Department of Health standards, 21,350 gallons per day at a rate of 175 gallons per day per bed and 15 gallons per day per employee. 80 employees, half the actual projected. Or if historical data will be used, at least five years of data be supplied. Following that report, Sunshine approached the village of Austin for water, but was turned down. Uh, then the town of Newcastle supervisor attempted to resolve the water problem by proposing the Spring Valley Road Water District. Adopted, that plan would have been an illegal segmenting of the Sunshine application. It failed for that reason, and as well as because two board members oppose it as a quid pro quo for Ossining's purchase of backup water supply while it upgrades its water treatment facility, and because the village of Ossining disowned it in a press release. Supervisor Rob Greenstein's ardent remarks in favor of the district also raised issues of fire safety at Sunshine, which, if pursued, could have cast a new shadow over the application. On the death of the water district plan, Sunshine ordered a report from its own hydrology for, uh, firm who purported to analyze five years of data. They threw out three years of those readings, saying a pipe leaked, and then cherry-picked the two years of historical data by taking averages of winter months on the justification that it would not use water, um, well water for irrigation, so winter months would be more representative of actual use. Those averages were then averaged, and lo and behold, the strategy yielded a projected 11,300 gallons per day. Sunshine's initial water budget projection. This, manipul <laughs> this manipulation is straight out of lying with Statistics 101. This study was presented to Newcastle's independent hydrologist who reversed himself and agreed with Sunshine's hy hydrologist report. He did condition his agreement, however, by reminding that the Westchester County Department of Health has the final say. Still, it evolves that his firm will be given a contract to monitor neighboring wells for two years after the build-out is complete in case negative impacts do occur. In response uh, to questions from the public, he affirmed the existence of this arrangement between his firm, the Town of Newcastle, and Sunshine during the ZBA's April 27th public hearing. Sunshine also deployed its retained lobbyists to procure a supportive letter from Westchester County Department of Health. This is supported by material obtained by uh, FOIL requests of the DEA, uh, DOH. This letter accepted use of historical data and projected a water requirement of 99 gallons per day per bed or 12,078 gallons per day per 122 patients. The Department of Health engineer writing the letter added proviso that source capacity analysis and the design of the water system must be in accordance with the recommended standards for Water Works 2012 edition, aka the 10 state standards. This condition has apparently been overlooked by the ZBA and Newcastle's Director of Planning. The 10 state standards are far more stringent. Uh, applying them to the data used by Sunshine's hydrologist, peak demand indicates that the new facility would require 31,854 gallons per day. What is the right number? 21,350 under New York State Department of Health, 11,300 using twice average data, or the 31,854 gallons per day as indicated by the 10 state standards. This answer has direct bearing on Austin. Sunshine's latest water uh, wastewater plan is sketchy. The first 10,393 gallons per day would go through the 20-year-old lift station. Former Austin uh, town supervisor Sue Donnelly herself said in the December 15 town, uh, town board meeting of 2015 last year that the station is due for an overhaul. Any overage would be diverted from the nursing facility to existing septic fields serving uh, the administrative buildings scattered over the 30-acre site. This non-plan presents a number of problems. One, Sunshine intends to exceed its current agreement with um, Austin for 10,000 gallons per day by 393 gallons per day. It would be fair to say that is a small discrepancy if the entire calculation weren't fictional. Ms. Tim, I just want to let you know that it's is that four minutes? Six minutes. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> are you close to the end? Are um, you about to wrap it up, or you want to? I have I have one page. Okay. I'll try to. Okay. As a new person. Yeah. Okay. Or I can okay. finish. It's, it doesn't matter. You just finish it okay. off. Okay. Sun, uh, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get through it. Sunshine's application includes no narrative, drawing, or engineering proposal to indicate what mechanism will divert the extra nursing facility waste to existing fields. Three, those existing fields serve buildings that were constructed by Rush Kress well before he sold his estate to the Asthma Institute and the 52 Association over 60 years ago. Sunshine can assert that the fields are functioning, but any homeowner knows that the real condition of a septic field may not be known until the property is inspected on sale. 
Regular maintenance often does not reveal the destruction wrought by time, roots, etc. The lift station was built, and the predecessor uh, to Sunshine hooked up to Ossining's sewage system in 1969 because an emergency situation existed. The nursing building's leach fields were failing. Ossining would be hard-pressed not to acquiesce to pleas from Sunshine to upgrade the lift station after the build-out is complete. Four, what if Sunshine adds more beds than the 122 it is currently zoning uh, approved for? They would have the room for hundreds more under current DOH regulations, and they've done it before, without approval from the ZBA. After taking over in 2009, the current for-profit operators added 10 beds, and this is how they explained it to the New York State DOH in their 24 Certificate of Need application for the expansion. The applicant has indicated that the reason for the 2010 losses is the result of the following. The facility's rate did not adequately address its costs. The applicant has indicated that they implemented the following steps to improve operations. The facility received a rate increase that reflected its actual cost. The facility increased occupancy from 2010, and the facility increased certified bed capacity from 44 to 54 beds. Elective representatives of the residents of Town of Ossining, please do your due diligence. Determine for yourselves what the New York State Public Health and Health Planning Council considers when they approve a certificate of need application. Don't doze off thinking that the state authorized these beds, and that's really all you need to know. Or that Newcastle is going to send any army of inspectors to make sure everything is kosher. Newcastle doesn't know anything about um, that anything that doesn't come before its boards. Once the COO is issued, Newcastle's inspectors will vanish. The New York, the New York State Public Health um, and Health Planning Council did not review site plans does not know that Sunshine has no access to municipal water or municipal fire and rescue services. They, did, they do not know that Sunshine is proposing to increase the nursing facility by almost 800% in order to increase beds by 200%. When the council reviewed Sunshine's application, they did not ask about the neighborhood, the zoning, the nature of the roads, the number of trees to be removed, the acres of bed rot that will be removed. All it knows is that there's demand in downstate New York for more beds, and Sunshine's for-profit owners want to build those beds is solvent and can finance the construction. Be very careful. Sunshine has explained on record that when their reimbursements do not cover their costs, it will increase the number of beds. Take a long look at their site plans and consider that the cost generated by their lavish project can exceed their Medicaid reimbursement over 90% of their revenues. Wonder for yourselves what pressures Medicaid reform will put on Sunshine's bottom line. Ask yourselves, what will your recourse be when Sunshine adds beds to stay profitable? Thank you for that information and sharing the letter from Ms. Lowell. Appreciate it. And uh, we will take advice of counsel on this. Um, I think that it was already sent. It was already sent to the board. Yeah. Again, uh, 55 Walden, Wall, uh, Walden Road, Village of Austin. Um Many members of the community have put in various foils, uh, requesting uh, several local and state to several local and state agencies, and these requests date back even to the beginning of 2016. In the past week, some documents uh, are being released on the subject of the Sunshine Home expansion application. The information is currently in review, but it's already clearly showing that real discrepancies with regard to how the developer has pitched the project, depending on which agency the organization is submitting the documents to. They are offering different data and representing different expansion facts, depending on who they are seeking approvals from. New York Department of Health, Westchester Department of Health, Newcastle ZBA, Newcastle Town Board, and of course, Austin Village and Town. This is continued cause for grave concern about the true risk and impact of the Sunshine Home expansion approval. They are trying to put everybody at sleep by not connecting the dots, and we are in the process of reviewing these foils so that we can actually connect the dots. Just a... Um Refresh the memory of the public. The town did send a letter to the planning board um, early in the year, I believe January or February, um, requesting that they do pause deck this uh, because uh, the town did believe that there were, are, were significant um, environmental impacts that should be studied. Right. And, and did you get any uh, response back from them? We didn't. Okay. Thank you. Except that they had received it. 
there anyone else who would like to address the board? Okay. May I have a motion to go into executive session for contracts and legal advice, please? I want to uh, announce that I, I don't. A person who used to come to all of our meetings uh, named Bobby Williams, that I've heard him say 168 Spring Street. Well, maybe you didn't, but oh yeah, no, because he mm -hmm. come to the the school well, board meetings. Well, he passed away last. Oh, so wanted to put that out there for the. Oh. His funeral will be Friday at Star Bethlehem Baptist. Church. You know what time? Seven o'clock Friday. Seven o'clock this Friday. Oh, sad. Bobby Williams would, um, I think, made it a point to come to, um, and he, and he will tell he will tell you, um, if he could, that you know he had a stutter, and he was um, one of the things that he was advised to do mm -hmm. was to speak in public. So he actually made a point to go to all the public meetings, and really, in doing so, he probably knew more about the village, the town, and the school district <laughs> than any one of us, because he would go to all the public meetings, he would sit there and listen, and then not only would he listen, but he would stand up at the end and participate in, in the um, visitor recognition on any item, sometimes on agenda items. He would read the agendas before he came to all the meetings, and he was well prepared, probably better prepared than some of the board members over time, I can tell you. Um, and he really was... A delight and such a huge asset to this community and he always had such um, great input and we always I know on the school board we often took many of his suggestions um, to heart and uh, just so appreciative to him and his family for sharing him for all the very many wonderful years that we had him here in Austin and I'm very sad, sad to learn about this because this is my, my first that I'm hearing of it so so um, again the funeral will be Star of Bethlehem this Friday 7 p.m. September I'm not sure what the date is because I don't remember today 16th at, se at 7 p.m. Star of Bethlehem and uh, I just want to make two more quick announcements before I close. And then uh, what I'd like to do is, is have a moment of silence for Bobby before we close. Uh, I do want to let everybody know that the town and the village are both going to be participating this year in the Organ Donor Enrollment Day for New York State, uh, which is going to be taking place Thursday, October 6th. We're going to set up in at the community center and various other locations around the town to try to improve uh, uh, the state's registration of organ donors we are the 50th out of 50 new york state it's deplorable and we are the fastest growing but not fast enough as far as i'm concerned uh so we need to get with the program and hopefully with austin on board we can start driving those numbers up we encourage you if you ha don't have it on the back of your li driver's license or you know anybody who's applying for a permit that you think would be interested in being part of this um life-saving and important registry to please sign up come to the community center on october 6th and we'll be having more information uh, out around town so so please uh, stay tuned i also neglected to mention that the austin documentary and discussion series um, is coming up this thursday night september 15th and it's about or after orlando and phyllis rodriguez lost their son at the world trade center on 9 11 uh, they began to speak out and up about their government um, using their son's memory as a justification to cause suffering for other sons and parents in other lands. The grieving couple's lives are transformed as they speak against the wars, befriend 9-11 conspirator Musai's mother, and reach out to men convicted of violent crimes. Witness this portrait of two people's deep belief that violence only begets more violence. Um, again, that's this Thursday night at Austin Public Library, 6.30 p.m., Thursday, September 15th. You can go to austinedocumentaries.org for more information. Don't forget we have a town hall meeting next Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. at our Austin Public Library. Please do stay tuned. It's going to be a very interesting meeting. We'll have more information for you forthcoming. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you. Oh, did, oh I forgot. Sorry. I did talk about and that. I don't know if and we got a motion to yeah, we, and a moment we did. Of we had a motion. Oh no, we skipped. The, we we sk not okay, let me motion. do the. Let's do the motion first, and we we got interrupted by that in, that news. So can I ha please have a motion to go into executive session for contracts and legal advice? 
Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. And now, please, if we could have a moment of silence in honor of our great community member, Bobby Williams. We will miss him dearly. Thank you, everyone, and have a nice night.